<clears throat> okay, I see that we have uh, more than 20 uh, attendees with us and we'll perhaps start from now. Once again, I want to say hello. This is our last but not least session for today's meeting. And we are going to meet with our alumni from community colleges that are representing the Dual Education USA Community College Fair today. I, he I hope you enjoyed uh, so far being with us and uh, have also, I, uh, I hope that our attendees have time to chat with community college representatives, ask them your burning questions. I am Ina Rabulian, Education USA advisor from Armenia. And I'm very pleased to see many attendees from Armenia and all over the world. Welcome to our panel discussion. Uh, let me introduce my panelists and I will go alphabetically. So my first guest speaker is Asan Anarkulev. He is originally from Kyrgyzstan. Asan holds an associate degree from Hudson Valley Community College, and he currently is studying in Binghamton University, majoring in mechanical engineering. Hi, Asan. Thanks for joining us. My Hello, next everyone. <laughs> My next speaker is Ellen Rami from Albania, but she was born and raised in Greece. Ellen has an exciting student experience. She holds an associate degree in arts and St. Petersburg College, and currently she's pursuing nursing at the same college. Hi, Ellen. Thanks for joining us. Hi, everyone. Thank you. And my third speaker is Ravil Kalishia from Kazakhstan. He obtained associate degree at the Diablo Valley Community College, majoring in economics and business administration. He studied bachelor degree at the University of California, San Diego. Hi, Ravil. Thanks for joining. Hi, thank, you. thank you. Guys, and thanks for your readiness to share your experience with our fair attendees. I see that we have many participants joined us so far. So just from technical point of view, participants are welcome to share their and post their questions under the Q&A and chat boxes. And I hope that our panelists will also have time to answer them. And at the end of this uh, discussion, I will see if we have any question unanswered. So we will address those questions for sure by the end of this discussion, okay? Are we ready to start? Great. So I have a, uh, a few questions prepared for you and I will perhaps ask the question and uh, you will answer alphabetically. So we start from Asen. So, so Asen, what makes you choose the particular college that you attended? Did you apply to several colleges or only that one? I definitely applied to quite a few colleges, uh, a lot of universities. But uh, going to my community college uh, for the first two years made the best financial sense. And Hudson Valley Community College was regarded as one of the better colleges in the area when I moved to Albany, New York State. And for me, that was instinctively the best option. Okay, thank you. Now, what about you, Ellen? So for me, actually, I just applied to SPC. That was my only option at the time. Uh, I tried to apply to university, but uh, all the documents and all the submissions that they were required were a lot of the time because I had my finals at um, my high school. So it took me some time for me to like understand what they were requiring. So SPC had like really great and it was only five step application. So that was my only option at a time and I got in, so. Okay, great. Ravil? Uh, so I always wanted to actually visit California and then I applied to DVC and actually DVC is the number one feeder uh, institution that uh, uh, like to other, to UC Berkeley and other UC schools for both actually domestic and international students. And at the time of application, I actually applied to some universities actually in Boston area, like Suffolk University and uh, New York Film Academy as well, yeah. Okay, great. I know that admission requirements from year to year is different. So I am just wondering what were admission requirements by that time that you uh, applied to the uh, at community colleges and was it the same as you applied to the universities or it was different? Uh, sure. For 
For my community college, the process was pretty similar to applying to universities, um, except it was less strict. Uh, the biggest two requirements for the admissions were the student visa, that was the first one, of course, and then the bank statement to prove that I could afford my schooling there. Uh, other than that, uh, I was required to submit an official transcript from high school. And since I went to an American high school, the process was much, much easier for me. But I know that people from other uh, countries, uh, they have to not try and translate their high schools high school transcripts. Um, and outside of that, uh, there was also a personal statement that I submitted expressing my will to join this college and my reasons. Uh, there was, of course, the application fee. And I know for some other international students, the requirement was also to provide TOEFL scores. Uh, but sometimes it's waived from other students, depending on where you went to high school. OK, great, thanks. So, Ellen? So, from my experience, because uh, I started my AEA SPC and then I continued for the nursing degree in the same college, of course, every uh, degree has different like pre requirements and the classes that you're taking. For like in the beginning, uh, what I had to submit was only the application, I had to submit a valid passport. Um, I could take my visa later, so that wasn't a problem for me. Uh, then it was the financial documents for the support from uh, my parents. And it depends of where you're getting your support and if you're getting any scholarships. Uh, another document was the proof on English. And the great thing for me was because I didn't have um, like ELTS. So this, the college, St. Petersburg College, uh, was offering placement tests where you can get an English uh, test in two hours from um, proctored, which was proctored. So it was easy for me to just take that test and there was my proof of uh, English. But if you don't pass that, you can always take English classes once you come here. So it was pretty easy and smooth. Okay, great to hear. And what about you, Ravil? Uh, so when I was actually applying, it was a little bit different. Uh, right now, it's there's actually a, like CCC apply website that students fill out, which it takes about thirty minutes. Um, then there's an application fee of fifty dollars. Uh, then they require uh, English proficiency, which is about TOEFL. Internet based is sixty one. IELTS five point five. And right now they also accept Duolingo uh, mm -hmm. due to pandemic happening, which requires the score minimum of ninety. Yeah. Uh, they also require the bank statement and financial sponsor form. Uh, same as Asan, actually, I went to American high school, so I didn't, it was the process for sending in transcripts was much easier than uh, sending in from my country as well. But actually, I still had to send my home country's uh, transcript and American transcripts as well uh, to make it count. Okay, I see. Since you and Asan talk about your experience in American high schools, I'm just wondering whether you were a flex student or something else. Uh, would you mind explaining what a flex student is? Yeah, perhaps, but because we have, I guess, many high school attendees, and if you are flex alumni, so it would be great if you do explain. Oh. I see. Uh, I, mean, I, I, I was just I just was just asking whether you like alumni or it was it. the other program that you studied. Yeah, I had a different program. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I guess. And what about you, Ravi? I actually I had a different program. Just I actually went to the twelfth grade for one wow. year at American High School and then transferred to a uh, community college. Okay. I see. What about you, Asan? The same. Uh, I started my high school since my freshman year, so I went all four years, but I was not involved in any of the programs. I just uh, okay. applied as a in-state high schooler. <laughs> okay, I see. Great, but Steve, uh, as a, yeah, as a, while studying at the community colleges, you were an international student, right? Correct, yes. yes. Okay. Great, great. So, and the next question that I want to ask you about financing your studies, I know that many students will ask this question. Do you have anything particular to share with our students? So what were your experience in financing your education? Uh, for me personally, 
Uh, sure, uh, I'll, I'll share as much as, uh, as I can and hope that it helps. But I have been extremely blessed because uh, my mom, with whom I moved to America and in pursuit of my education, she uh, was finishing up her doctorate degree at Arizona State University while I attended high school. So we were both studying at the same time. Naturally, during that time, it was quite difficult for us financially because the only income we had was her stipend as a PhD student. Mm -hmm. um, but after we moved to New York, she got a job offer to be an assistant professor. And that's where we had a little more leeway financially and I was able to afford my community college. So because I had that uh, parent who was always supportive of me and always support my desire to pursue my education, she never withheld any financial support. Um, outside of that, unfortunately at my community college, there were not any need-based scholarships. So I had to pay the full uh, out-of-state international tuition fee. Mm -hmm. um, after the first semester, uh, once I was able to establish myself as a student, I qualified for scholarship applications that were mer merit-based and they were essay-based. So I filled out a couple of those applications and I actually got a scholarship that uh, covered the, the portion of my tuition. Okay, great, thank you. So from my experience, uh, I had really, I have really supportive parents. So from the beginning, my father was supporting all my education and the finances. Um, of course, like, for example, like uh, the amount of the money that you pay for tuition in US and my parents in Albania, it's so much different. So of course you have difficulties in the beginning. Uh, the good thing at SPC as a community college, it has great scholarship opportunities. And I have a lot of friends from other big universities that they always will tell me like apply and apply more. It's not just applying once and if you don't get it, just give up. So I applied in many different scholarships. I've got uh, till now, I've got two scholarships and also another opportunity to support your finances and your education is by working in campus, which is legal for international students. And I started last March uh, working as a student assistant at SPC, which have helped me a lot with my finances and my everyday expenses as well. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, I actually had a talk with my parents like early on when I was going to middle school in my country. And they asked me, what do you want to do? Like, with your university life. And I said that I actually want to maybe study abroad, like maybe Canada or the US. Uh, then we started saving money early on. And, uh, and through the community college was actually a better option. Like we call it two plus two, like two years at the community college uh, and two years at the university, which actually makes the cost uh, way cheaper because the university, uh, actual university tuition cost is pretty expensive uh, to handle and community college actually helps a lot. Uh, then I also had uh, part-time work experience in my college that actually helped uh, for uh, like for groceries or like something like that for minor expenses. Like they covered my minor expenses. Then um, we had student organizations that actually participated in uh, like AGS is the statewide honor society that supports students with high academic achievements and they give out scholarships every semester like sometimes students can qualify for two or three. Uh, the amount is not that big sometimes varies from 500 to 1000 but it still adds up if you collect more and more scholarships so I was the recipient of a couple of scholarships as well for from that uh, organization. Okay, great. Great to know that you, some of you at least received uh, any assistance. I know that it is uh, very valuable once you had to collect all the money that you need to uh, pay for your tuition. So great. And guys, I have another question. So you are accepted. What is your experience at community colleges? Housing, campus, transportation, like insider's view? Uh, yes, uh, once I got accepted into Hudson Valley Community College, uh, for me, housing was much simpler because I lived with my mother during my community college years. Uh, for transportation, it was relatively 
simple as well because uh, my student ID card from my community college provided free bus rides for public transportation. So I actually never had to pay for it and it was always convenient. Um, at my college, there, were, there aren't any dorms officially affiliated with a school. However, there are other dorms that are super close to the campus that uh, some of the students utilize for their housing. And I, I had friends who lived in those dorms. So there are definitely options uh, for housing in, in that regard. Um, and am I missing any other aspects of my campus experience that you mentioned? No, just because your experience was something dif different, but we have also, uh, like from my previous meeting with other alumni, they also choose some community colleges that near to uh, their relative house, relative mm -hmm. house, or something else. So uh, there are, uh, so your experience perhaps uh, different from the Ellen's and Ravel experience, but it will also right. teach something to our attendees. So thanks in that sense. So I know that your mother will uh, prob probably help you also to cover some food related uh, fancy. So yeah, and we'll now we'll hear what was the Alice and Ravel experience. So for me, um, I actually chose SPC to leave in Florida because I had only my two cousins here. So he, one of my cousins was studying at SPC. So he helped me and told me about the community college. So that's how I applied and when I got in, I knew that I will go and leave with them. So that's kind of what I did. Uh, as a community college, it doesn't have dorms, but the good thing that I really like is that it has 12 different campuses around the area. So wherever you leave, you're gonna have for sure one campus near your house. So for me, for example, one of the campuses was only 10 minutes away. Um, as a, um, as San said, we have the same thing. My, my student ID has as well the free bus rides. I haven't really used them because when I came here, I had my cousin help me. And then later I got my car uh, because it's so much easier in Florida to drive with your car than getting public transportation. But it just depends on the person and what they like and if they have any relatives or friends that they can help them. Um, something else. Uh, I think that's it. I don't know if I missed something. <laughs> it's okay. Let's hear Ravi. Uh, okay, so DVC's campus is not that big like compared to US universities, actually. Uh, yes, yeah, same situation as Osana and Yelena. It was um, that uh, our community college didn't have any official dorms. So we had to, I had to go through off-campus housing. But the good thing, it was right across the street from the college. So it was only a three minute walk to the college. Uh, and students were renting apartments like I was renting with my friends uh, to make the cost cheaper. Um, then uh, for transportation, I, our ID cards, they didn't provide free public bus transportation, but there were bus stamps at the bookstore that uh, students could buy that is actually cheaper than uh, paying for the bus by, by itself. Uh, but mostly uh, my, all my friends had cars, so we were just uh, getting to our, our destinations by cars. But the good thing is that DVC's uh, placement was right across the street from the actual apartment complex. Okay, great. So many diverse experiences. <laughs> And uh, so being uh, as a community college student, what kind of services you enjoyed as international students? So were there any other specific services for international students? Some uh, communities, I know something that you were part of those. Uh, at my school, uh, the biggest services that I utilized were the tutoring centers. Um, because in my program, when I started pursuing engineering, oftentimes I, I had trouble with math courses because they tend to be pretty advanced. But fortunately, my school provided uh, an academic center where you could go and get tutoring, not only from staff members and professors, but also from peers, which makes it a lot more uh, comfortable interacting and getting some help. Um, I actually ended up working there as a writing tutor. So there were also resources for writing tutoring uh, and I personally worked with a lot of ESL students, uh, people studying English as their second language, because I had that experience uh, in high school, I could relate to them more. 
So we offer those kinds of services as well. Um, outside of that, there were a lot of career fairs at my community college where the companies uh, would come to our campus and uh, display their tables and promote themselves and try to get uh, employees from school. And that's actually how I ended up getting my first internship because of that career fair. Um, and of course, there were quite a few job opportunities as well. I had three jobs as a student uh, at my community college. I was a tour guide, writing tutor, and I, I was also a photographer for my school newspaper. So uh, because there were opportunities, I definitely tried to take advantage of that. And although like they, they wouldn't pay as much to the point where I could afford my tuition all by myself, they still uh, helped me uh, dramatically. Great. So for my experience, um, we also have the tutoring, which is free. We have uh, every campus has a different library, which was very convenient for me because I love to study in a library instead of studying at home. Um, other than that, you have the, the tutors. And for example, when I was taking classes in anatomy and physiology, uh, you could go to the to the tutors and just get like uh, the school or the skeletal system. So you have all the resources there in order to study by yourself or with someone else. Um, something else as well with the SPC card, ID card, uh, we'll have different, in different campuses, there were different activities made for international, for every student. They'll have free food and they'll have different like uh, affairs for like different uh if you want to get a job or for internships. So that helped me as well. Um, another service that I utilized a lot was the career services, which they, they help you a lot with um, when you want to build your CV and you want to apply to a job. When I applied for the student assistant, they helped me build my resume and uh, write everything and how to write it and how to make it look easy and nice. Uh, which I didn't before because I didn't know how to do it. Um, uh, also, because in community colleges, you have like small classes and with your professors, your professors are a lot more closer to you than in a university because you have direct contact with them. They can give you even their phone numbers and you can just call them or text them for something that you need last minute. So they don't mind that in except from like if you go to university you just have a big outdoor room with like students and one professor which comes and goes of course they give you resources as well but i feel like in community colleges you have that uh close uh contact with your professors and your peers and also you can make different friends because you have different classes and there's like a variety of people and you can learn a lot from that experience Great, great to know. Ravi, your turn. Okay, so uh, there are actually there were many services to take advantage of. Like the most that I was actually using when I first came to DVC was the counselor services. Uh, is where you sit down with a counselor and plan ahead your academic future, where you would like to transfer, what courses that a uh, student needs to take. Uh, then actually a career in transfer services is one of the places that I actually ended up working for when I was studying at DVC is where students get help um, uh, with writing resumes or cover letters and uh, we answer questions related to transfer to specific universities. Um, then there was an English department and math department tutoring where students could get help um, with their essays and uh, if they need help with math problems. Uh, then there were <clears throat> various student organizations, like the biggest one of them was our student government at uh, Diablo Valley College uh, that is in charge, that was in charge of all the student organizations. Uh, then there was a student life office that a uh, place where People go and you can learn about uh, many other extracurricular activities. Like, for example, I think DVC has like maybe 195 or 250 student organizations that uh, students can participate in. And uh, yes, Lim as a son, I actually was working. I was working two uh, two jobs on campus: <clears throat> one at International Student Office and one at Korean Transfer Services. Then, actually, after I graduated from DVC, I took advantage of optional practical training and 
worked off campus for one year before I, I transferred to UC San Diego. Okay, great to know. So uh, guys, uh, so I know that uh, you have already have some experience with transferring to the some uh, four-year universities or colleges. So please share with us this experience. Uh, was it easy? What you had to do? Is there, a, there was there any challenges? Uh, because I know that uh, this is the next step that perhaps uh, all the students from community college should think about. Uh, the most challenging part for me when, when it came to transferring was the tuition because compared to a community college, affording a, a four-year school is a lot more expensive. And my family and I had to get together and really strategize our finances and even to see whether there would be something that I could pursue after my community college. Uh, once that was established, everything else was kind of just administrative work, uh, things like paperwork and everything else. But uh, I ended up applying to a lot of uh, different schools in my area. And I decided to go to Binghamton University because it was a little bit closer and they also had a great reputation for my program. But the biggest advice I can give is whatever schools you have uh, as your priority choices, definitely reach out to their academic advisors from the schools you're interested in. Then ask them directly about your transcript from your community college. You show them the classes that you have taken in the last two years and ask them very specifically which classes will transfer and whether you'll be on track for graduating. Because a lot of uh, schools, not a lot, but some schools will not accept all the credits that you've taken. And that means that once you transfer, you have to retake those classes, even though you've already taken them, that can hold you back for a semester or even a year. So because I was very active communicating with advisors from different colleges, I was able to select the best one that made my tra transfer easier. And once I transferred to my school, um, I transferred as a junior. So I only had two more years left on my undergraduate degree program. So from my experience, I didn't transfer in a four year university. Um, that was my first plan actually, because I started um, the idea that I would major in information system management. Um, and because of that, I learned a lot about a program that SPC offers to students so they can make their transition to university very smooth. So there was a program called the FUSE, which guarantees you um, an admission to a USF, which is the four year university. So by that, when you apply and you get into that program, uh, you have like different activities when you learn a lot about your um, degree that you want to pursue. And also you don't have the stress to, after you're done with the two years of uh, the AEA, you don't have the stress like, oh my gosh, I have to like apply to the university. I have to get, gather all the information. I have to start all over again with the program, with that transition. It's so smooth that you already know that you're in the university, even though you're taking still classes at your community college. Um, there was another similar to this, uh, Ignite was the name of the, it's the name of the program, which it transfers the students from SBC to uh, Florida a and University. So it's so easy. The uh, colleges always will try to give you opportunities to make the transition, <clears throat> I'm sorry, easy for you uh, in order to not have the stress and not have to like pay different like fees in order to apply for university. Of course, it depends on what degree you want to pursue. So it depends if you want to go for medical degree, maybe uh, one of those universities is not for you or you don't like it and you want to go somewhere else. But I had this opportunity and I wasn't until I changed my major to nursing, which is uh, part of the community college and I, have, I can take bachelor's later. So for me, like the tuition, it's still the same and it just depends on the degree that you're pursuing. Okay, great. I suppose that you also answered the question about major change because we had the questions. Okay, so for my situation, since DVC was actually a number one feeder institution to UC Berkeley, uh, that's why I chose it. Uh, then when I was studying later on, it was actually 
not difficult, I'll say, to transfer, but it's challenging because many universities require different things. Like, for example, what you see uh, require, like, for example, University of Pennsylvania might, might require differently. Um, so it was just preparing in a timely manner. And I would suggest that if somebody who would go to community college is to start early on, then uh, dragging it uh, until the end because it will help a lot because since writing the personal statements is time consuming, I would suggest on that. Um, then there was a program called TAG, it's transfer admission guarantee that offers uh, community college students a guaranteed admission to uh, UC Davis, UC Irvine, uh, UC Merced, UC Riverside, UC Santa Barbara, and UC Santa Cruz. Um, we also had um, career fairs and school fairs. So most of the universities uh, were present once every semester on our campus. Like for example, if somebody was interested in uh, joining UCLA, uh, there was a UCLA representative who we could speak to and then they would evaluate our transcript, our extracurricular activities. And then they would say like, if uh, what are, they cannot say what are the chances to get in, but they will advise what next steps to take or what something else students might need to complete before they transfer. And counselor services was actually one of the helpful ones uh, because they also evaluate with the students like uh, where they can transfer, what credits they need to take for that are transferable to the specific institution. So that requires planning and academic planning and academic future, yeah. I guess I was muted. <laughs> Great to hear uh, again, uh, diverse experience. Thank you for sharing. And uh, we are kind of uh, running out of the time. So I will probably ask, them, ask my last question about your experience of OPT or internship, whether you had one after or during your community college studies. Uh, yes, I'm actually currently working on my OPT application. I just finished everything and I submitted to UCIS. It was quite a stressful process because you had to acquire a lot of paperwork and the documentation, your I-20 and also some fees. Even though you think that you have everything, it's still so scary to fully submit because it, the process takes three to six months. And especially during the pandemic, I imagine it's even slower. So like if there's even one mistake then it might be rejected and I'd have to start over. But fortunately, uh, my international student office at my university were very supportive. They looked at my application before I sent it out and they gave me feedback, some things to change. And overall, I was able to get some help with the entire process. Okay, great. I actually haven't um, got the opportunity to do OPT. I'm going to try next year since uh, I'm going to graduate from the nursing degree. So I can give you a lot of information for that. Okay. Actually, I can get information from you guys. <laughs> Great. What about you, Ravi? Uh, yeah, I had an opportunity to do an OPT. And same as Asan actually said, yeah, it was quite like challenging to complete all the documentations because it's it is really scary like sometimes like i don't know if i would miss a paper or something so i had to recount like 20 times before sending it out um uh, yeah but actually opt helped me to uh save up some money before i actually transfer to a four-year institution okay great guys we have very interesting question about cultural shock so you came from a different country uh, radical different than U.S. What was your experience in that? It was wild. <laughs> uh, when I came to U.S., uh, I moved to Arizona, which is a, a desert state, and it was a culture shock in many respects. I had obviously the cultural shock in the American culture sense, but there were also a lot of my uh, classmates in school, they were Mexican Americans. So I also had the exposure to the Mexican culture, which was really, really interesting. And the weather, uh, moving from Kyrgyzstan to a desert, a literal desert, there was a very, very different change that I had to take some time to adjust. But after six months or so, I finally felt like I was able to assimilate to my surroundings and felt like I was actually uh, enjoying my time there as well.
but it was quite a quite a bit of a change. So from my experience, the first year was, uh, as Hassan said, it's like crazy uh, because, I mean, I lived in Greece, I lived in Albania, and it wasn't so different for me or so difficult for me to adjust. So it's easy for me to adjust with people and environment. I love Florida because of the weather. So I was like, I'm not leaving from here. <laughs> um, and with when it comes to like people and the culture, the community, I didn't have that much of experience because you can see movies and it's not like the movies like don't believe on that because you think like everyone is the same as the movies and it's the same as high school it's not uh, the only thing like in the beginning it was shocking to me was because you go to different classes and you have different friends and you feel like you can make very good friendships because you're always like changing classes and it's only 16 weeks and you can't have like a good group of friends but um, I met a lot of friends and with most of them I'm still keeping in touch and maybe we'll go out and uh, with some we have like the same major some are pursuing the major in different colleges but uh, you will learn a lot the first year of course for everyone it's difficult maybe it will be stressful but don't worry about that part like think about what it's going to be in the future for four years that I've been here, it's so much different and I just love it. I love the old experience and I love learning more and I'm learning new languages and new words from different languages and cultures that I didn't know before. Uh, so for me, it was um, same, it was crazy at the beginning. Like I still remember that day when I was sitting by the international student office and thinking if I should just go back to Kazakhstan, like what if my English is not enough or what if I cannot handle the education, like maybe I should just go back. But then actually I, I fell in love with California and then California weather. Uh, and the, the, actually the college itself was so diverse that uh, people from all over the world were there. Um, like we, I had experience with many cultures, uh, like uh, there were a lot of students from uh, China, Korea and Indonesia. So I was exposed to that culture. Uh, actually also people from Germany and France were there too. Um, but were, I was exposed to that culture, like uh, learning about different cultures, about different people, also American culture. And then after that, I just decided to stay and continue, continue my education. Okay, great. So uh, guys, uh, we have another interesting question. What would be the advice, uh, your advice to international students? We'll go very quickly on one just big advice to international students, those who are considering community college as a next step of education. Uh, just one big advice. All right, off the top of my head, I would say foster your resilience. Uh, this is one quality that will help you overcome many challenges. And there will be a lot of challenges you will face as an international student. It's not an easy process, but just practice your patience, resilience, fortitude, determination, and you will eventually find more and more ways to overcome any challenge. And it applies to life in general, not just being a student. Thank you. I would say, think why you wanted to come here and why you wanted to pursue your education in the US. That's the first thing that you have to think because like, for example, for me, the first year, as everyone said, it's difficult. Then you think of going back and you think that you can't do it, but think of why you wanted to do it and why you, it took you six months or a year to apply and you're finally here. You're not gonna give up because you wanted to be here. So don't give up on anything even if it's scholarship or your education or getting a job or doing the OPT or everything that you're doing, don't give up, just try harder and harder and you're gonna achieve it. Great. Uh, I usually have said to most people that uh, life is like a chess and every move matters. So sometimes a step backwards can lead to a better step forward. Uh, sometimes have a, <clears throat> Uh, sit by yourself and then have uh, with your thoughts and uh, uh, have, have a thinking about like why would you like to come to the U.S. like uh, where you would like to go um, and actually U.S. is a pretty good opportunity to meet a very diverse culture because there uh, uh, something a little bit of everything is in there. 
and uh, don't give up on anything. Just pursue what you have to pursue. Okay, great, guys. Thank you very much for your experience. Thanks for sharing it with us. So guys, I uh, see that we have a lot of questions about the financial aid, about the application requirement, uh, and the deadlines and all the stuff. So I will uh, encourage you to go back uh, to our FAIR platform chat with the uh, community college representatives. We have just a few minutes. So uh, please use your last chance to meet with the representatives to ask them the questions because the requirements can be different from colleges to colleges and financial aid opportunities as well. So uh, once again, thanks for being with us. As a closing note, I'd like to mention also about Education USA centers. Please use them as much as you can. And there can be several uh, Education USA centers in your country. So please take advantage of these advising free advising resources. We are ready to help you in every stage of your academic career, whether you can just think just whether you are just thinking about applying to US colleges and universities, or you are in the middle of the process or even if you got admitted and you don't know what to do the next. So please be in contact with us. We will be very happy to help you. And guys, once again, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, I, I want to, so I will end this session and uh, have a great uh, uh, rest of the day. Thank, thank you. you so thank you for Good inviting. Luck. Thank you so much. Good luck with everything. Bye-bye.